This is Make Money Count, brought to you by Connect Home Financing. And I'm joined, as always, with the team from Connect, founder CEO of Connect, Marcus Severus. He is an economist with a background in investment banking, uh, with a decade of customer service roles in various fields. Principal broker of Connect, Justin Turner, also joining us, and Matthew Scanlon, customer service rep with Connect. Gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome in. Ian, I don't want to disappoint you, but Justin's not here today. Yes, but oh. I think he is listening right now. He's on his, on his way back from Peterborough with uh, a weekend with the family. So, hi, Justin, if you're listening. So, you get to go to Italy, and you get to go to France, and you get <laughs> to go to the UK, and Justin gets to go to Peterborough. Yeah, I think it's fair. Well, well, I think it no, makes sense. No shortage of short straws in the company, huh? Listen, well, Ian, <laughs> I haven't been further than five blocks in the last five oh. months. I'm still chained <laughs> to this desk over here, so... <laughs> Uh, just to, just out of curiosity, because it is, you know, it, it, you're a neat r- resource right now with the way travel is going on. How did you find uh, Marcus traveling all over Europe? Was it difficult? Were there long delays or was it pretty straightforward? Uh, it really depends on the country, but I, it's it's definitely getting busier. Um, Italy is, is pretty wide open. Uh, the UK is totally wide open. Like London, wow. no one's wearing a mask anywhere. It's like COVID doesn't exist. And then when I went to France, um, I took the Eurostar from London to Paris. And as soon as I got to Paris, you could tell like it was totally different. And um, when I flew out of Paris, I can tell you that uh, like the airport shut down. Like it's very few flights. Mm-hmm. Um, and then arriving in Canada, I'll give you the whole tour, right? Arriving mm-hmm. in Canada, uh, there was, there's a huge customs issue at terminal one. So if you're, uh, if you're flying in, you should account for it because, um, if you don't have a connection or you can't, like I did use the Wi-Fi and book yourself a connection uh, while you're land, while you're landing, well done. Uh, while you're landing, you have to stay yeah. on the airplane, and uh, some of the time, like people are on the airplane for three to five hours, because they don't want to release people off of the airplane uh, into customs lineups um, for fear of kind That's of insane. transmission, and uh, so it was. And luggage takes another couple hours. So, uh, anyways, do you uh, I'm a, here. Do you use a Nexus card? No, I don't. You know what? I didn't do. I haven't. I haven't done it because I usually travel with my kids. I, d- I didn't on this uh, occasion. Yeah, we got one. We got ones for the kids as well. Yeah, it's just I, that's, so, that's probably so what much I easier. Do. Yeah, I, I, I definitely should do it. But the yeah, um, I mean, it's yeah. you have to you have to you, know, you take you invest some time in filling out the forms and getting the pictures done and and all that kind of stuff. But man, when you can just you know you the kids the wife poof and you're through in literally three four minutes. And you look back at these these lines just going back and back and back. And it's just, especially these days, it's the only way to go. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. But no, listen, other than that, like little tiny, you know, uh, you got to get a test all the time. You got to kind of, you know, like there's all, like in France, I'll tell you also pretty cool. There's There are tents all over the streets. Like every couple hundred meters, there's a COVID testing tent. And wow. you... You get a, you do a test and then they like, they'll text you the result or they'll WhatsApp you the result or email you the result in less than 10 minutes from these tiny little pop-up labs all over the streets. They really got that figured out there. Yeah. That's very, very smart. Just since we're on that roll of that kind of stuff anyway, you know, when it comes to COVID and the pandemic and all that kind of stuff, I mean, how is your business, you know, you look back a year and a half ago compared to today. Are you, are you having to conduct business differently? Are you getting different clientele? You know, what are the changes that you've noticed over the last year, two years almost now? Yeah, we talk about this a lot on the show. We definitely see, uh, or at least saw borrowers under significantly more financial strain over the last 18 months or so. I think we're we're starting to come around from that now. Uh, we're seeing people, you know, in a, a lot better financial health. But and then it, 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 what we're seeing now is a reaction to just how low rates are. So a lot of people using this as an opportunity to break their existing mortgage or refinance um, to 
to take advantage of lower interest rates. And then on our other side of the business, which is our investment uh, vehicle, uh, I can tell you that it like we, uh, I was reading a lot about uh, COVID as it kind of began in its genesis out of China in January and February. So uh, we pulled back quite a bit um, from our investment vehicle. We, we went to a pretty significant cash position uh, and that allowed us to kind of take the temperature of what was happening in March and April mm. and then redeploy capital in May and June when we realized uh, how much stability was going to, how much capital was going to get injected into the market by the central banks, thereby creating the asset price bubble that we're seeing right now. So we are extremely cautious on the investment vehicle side and, um, and our investors kind of obviously appreciate that. Uh, and on the borrower side, um, yeah, we, we, we kind of went from people that were struggling a little more to now people that are, you know, uh, really taking advantage of lower interest rates. Nice. So it's a good, good question. Yeah, but business is and great. The one, the one, but, the one yeah. good thing that we've covered over the past couple of weeks, and it was news to me, was when we talk about people and their credit rating, because there's a lot of people, myself included, until, uh, you know, you guys started talking about it, who figured if your credit rating is damaged or bad, it, you know, it's going to take years or whatever to, to restore it. And, you know, there, there are people out there right now whose credit rating isn't great, who aren't picking up the phone and calling you guys because they figure that they're just going to get hammered. Uh, and yet, you know, you've, you've said before, you know, yes, it was a bad time. And yes, through probably a lot of the time, no fault of their own. Yes, their credit rating may be down, but that shouldn't stop them because you guys can work with them to bring it back up again. It, it takes so much less time than people think. And like the easiest thing for us to do is to just wipe things off of people's credit reports. Like if you ha if you're sitting there and you got a judgment on your credit report, or you're maxed out on lines of credit or credit cards, the longer that stays that way, the more damaging it'll be for your credit. And if you've got equity in your house, you sh there's no way you should be carrying a balance on anything. You should be using that equity to clear out those balances because the cost of the capital is so much cheaper for starters. And if you have issues with your credit, it fixes the credit right away. And, uh, and then you end up just refinancing to a lower interest rate anyways, depending on penalties and fees, you can just match it to the date of the maturity of your mm -hmm. existing first mortgage. So there are tons of options for fixing credit. Yeah. A hundred percent. So many of the shows that I do, you know, the bottom line is that the mistake listeners make is they assume they know. And, you know, and, and in almost every case, they don't, and there are ways around it. And unfortunately, they look to their friends for advice. They look to colleagues for advice, and the advice is right here. You want to talk about mortgages? This is where to get your answer. Give us a shout. Phone lines are open right now, 416-872-1010, 416-872-1010. You also text us. Regular texting rates apply, 71010. And Adam is in Toronto calling. And Adam, good afternoon. Welcome in. Hey. Hello? Yes. Hi, Adam. What's your question? Hey, uh, my question. Uh, uh, kind of cutting uh, in and out I there, Adam. Yeah. Um, can Adam, can, uh, yes, we can. Okay. I'm actually calling about hearing about more about your guys at MIC. Um, today, I currently have about 150,000 in self direct trading accounts. So far, I've been happy with the results. Um, the only problem is I don't spend much time watching about the market. Um, I've been thinking about maybe investing into pre-construction or something. Um, I know so many people are pretty concerned about the market and the housing market and all that. What makes the difference uh, from a real estate investing standpoint for you guys? Oh, great. Okay, good question. So uh, a little bit to unpack there. So you're in a self-directed RRSP trading account right now. Mm -hmm. Um I mean, you would have done great in the market. I think it doubled off the low, right? Like we're at 4,500 almost on the S&P right now. Um, our uh, mortgage investment corporation, MIC, that's what they're called. So you obviously know a little bit about it. Uh, a mortgage investment corporation is just a, a specific investment vehicle that um, is provisioned uh, by the Canadian government that allows us to create a corporation, pool capital together, from all of our investors, lend that capital out, and then create a return. 
And as long as every dollar of interest that we collect is paid out to our investors by the end of each calendar year, we do it on a monthly basis, then there's no tax inside of that mortgage investment vehicle. So all of the yield, all of the return is paid out to our investors. Uh, our mortgage investment fund's been operating for about 10 years now. It returns, on average, over the last 10 years, it has returned 8%. Uh, I think it's like either 8.03 or 7.97. Uh, it's available on our website, um, which I can pull up in a, in a, in a minute here, and, and we can discuss it if you watch our YouTube show or you watch our television show on CHCH TV at 8.30 on Saturdays. There's a good plug. Uh, you can view uh, what, what I'm going to show. But uh, wh this is just to say that it's a, it's a very uh, stable return historically. Our mortgage investment fund is also quite conservatively structured. So um, our uh, target loan to value, so the amount of money we're willing to lend relative to the value of the home, typically sits between 50 and 60%. Um, the reason why we're able to do that is because we are, as we always say, we're direct to our borrower and we're direct to our investor. So because we are direct to borrower and because we are direct to investor, we're able to capture really good borrowers when we speak to them and we're able to offer them really competitive interest rates without sacrificing the yield that we pay to our investors. By removing all of the middlemen that are typically in this relationship. So if you think about the way mortgage investment funds or even mutual funds are, are, are typically operated, it's, they, it's a, a corporation or a fund that will pool all this money together. And in order to pool that money together, they pay investment advisors to bring that capital in. The moment you have to pay an investment advisor to bring capital in, you're diluting the return of the investor because the investor mm -hmm. essentially pays the fees to generate that capital and put it together in this bundle. Um, Marcus, just before the break, uh, you had mentioned um, MICs, and I got an email from you. And this is this is how um, uh, in, uh, uh, this is how a little knowledge can be very dangerous. Because when I got the email that we were going to be talking about them, I'm like, well, why are we talking about the stock market and market identifier codes? And this will be interesting. And I wonder where this is going to go. And I was completely wrong and had no idea of what I was speaking. Yeah. No, it, mortgage investment corporations. It's, it's a really great way for, for investors to get access to the Canadian mortgage market if it's done properly. Uh, Can you start so at the absolute beginning? And explain, you know, uh, I guess what it is and obviously what sets connect apart from the others. Yeah, for sure. So we were talking a little bit about it before the break. Uh, a mortgage investment corporation is uh, licensed under the CRA and we're monitored by Financial Services Commission or FISRA now they're called and the OSC, Ontario or the Superintendent, uh, uh, sorry, uh, the OSC, Ontario Securities Commission. So the way it works is as long as we take our investor capital and deploy it into mortgages, there's certain rules about how we deploy it and how much can be in any one mortgage and how much cash we need to keep uh, on, on the sidelines. As long as we're abiding by all those rules and as long as we're paying out all of the returns that we're generating to our investors, we do not have to pay any tax, which really helps with torquing up the returns for our investors without taking on additional risk. The ways that we've improved upon the classic MIC structure, and we were talking a little bit about this, where typically mortgage investment funds will use investment advisors and they will pay them to bring in investor capital. Connect doesn't do that. Connect deals directly to the investor. So we, you know, we have a great group of investors. I've mentioned on previous shows that every year before, well, at least before COVID, we used to have our investor barbecues in my backyard every year. Um, it's going to be a little tighter now. We've got quite a few more investors. Um, but we deal directly with our investors. And that prevent, it eliminates us having to pay but sometimes between 3 and 5% are what our peers pay to solicit and bring in wow. capital. We don't pay that. And the way you can think about it if you're an investor is that money is going right, it's either going right back to you as a return, or it's allowing us 
to lend money cheaper and thereby get better borrowers, less risky borrowers into our mortgage fund. On the same, same kind of way of thinking, we're also direct to our borrowers. Where other mortgage investment funds call mortgage brokerages like ours and say, hey, will you guys send us some business? We'll pay you to bring us mortgages. And those fees are also, you know, between three and 5%. So if you're, if you're looking at investing in a mortgage investment fund, the first thing I would ask are, where are all the fees going? Because if you're, if you're paying 5% to bring money in and 5% to get money out, that's 10% of expense that you're incurring. And if you're planning on returning 8% like Connect does to your investors, you need to target an 18% yield. Whereas with Connect, we've mentioned this many times on the show, we've got salaried employees that work here. Salaried employees, who I should mention, are all investors in our mortgage investment fund. Nice. So those salaried employees are the ones that are making the decisions on who we should be lending money to using our computer program um, and, and, and uh, our, our, our underwriting guidelines. But as you also know from listening to the show, our underwriting guidelines are really heavily predicated upon people we can help. So the price of admission to get a mortgage from Connect is you got to have some equity in your house, obviously. Once we've determined that you've got equity, the only way we can lend money is if we can show that within a six to 12 month timeline, we're going to be able to use the money we're providing you with to fix something that's deficient, credit, income, or property. As long as we can show that there's a credible exit strategy for the capital that we're investing in one of these borrowers, we're going to lend the money and we're going to lend them cheaper than anyone else will lend them in the market because it serves the purposes of our mortgage brokerage and it serves the investor's motivation of, hey, listen, like we're not trying to swing for the fences, right? We want a, a nice tidy return and we don't want any middlemen in it and we want to make sure that we're not taking any undue risk. So I, you always have to be careful when you're talking about you know, investment vehicles and Connect is no different. Nothing is risk free. Um, you know, I, I can just tell you that, you know, my family, we have a, a lot of our money in it. I can tell you that the people that work here are invested in it. I can tell you that it's something that we're all very passionate about and we've never had a loss. And in fact, because of the way that we lend capital, because we, we, we lend almost as if we're investing in our borrowers, We've only had, uh, over the last 10 years, I think we've only had four or five mortgages that went into default. So we haven't lost any capital. And even in those cases when a mortgage goes into default, it's typically not like a bad person who's trying to get away with something. It, it, at least it mm -hmm. hasn't been in Connect's case. It's just, you know, no matter how much you try, sometimes life really gets in the way of your plans. Especially in the last year and a half. Yeah. So I can, I, listen, it's something we're really, you can tell the way I talk about it, right? I talk about the MIC. It's the, one of the biggest parts of my job. It's something that, you know, it took a lot of time to build it the way that we've built it. It would have been much faster to pay investment advisors to bring capital in and just to focus on like, you know, getting as much money in our investment account as possible. But um, the way we've built it now has is actually our competitive advantage to our peers mm -hmm. and if you go to is connect, this where we say that uh, past results are no guarantee of future performance sure you say it. yeah you, you, listen okay. you, you say it. <laughs> you say it. uh I, listen i can also tell you one more thing if i screw up like i can't go to christmas dinner <laughs> that's a great point man that's a good point yeah. 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 That's, yeah. that's, there it is there, the family making sure everything works out. 416 872 1010. Alan is in Toronto. Alan, good afternoon. What is your question, sir? Uh, hi. Hey, hi, Alan. How are you? Hear you? Me? Yes. Hi. Good, good. So, my question is this is that my uh, Equifax report, um, there is basically I bought a property about a year ago, and that's not showing up on my Equifax report. Uh, I've been trying to work with them to update it. So my question is, is my database any different than yours? I mean, that would you pull my uh, Equifax report? Would you have that information? Or are we all pulling the information from the same database? 
Hmm. It, it, yeah, it, it, we all pull from the same database. So we may, I, I don't know which report. You and pull. yet, and yet, Marcus, for yes. some reason, my uh, Equifax uh, a beacon score, I can walk into, you know, wherever, another institution, and it's a little different because the numbers are weighted differently or this part's different or that part's different. I mean, I can understand what Alan's asking because I've in the in the past. I remember going to uh, I wanted a rental place, and uh, it was the uh, 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 the other area is that with two credit agencies in the country, one may have the right information, the other one might not. It happens a lot. It happens all the time. I can tell you that most of the lenders we deal with use Equifax, uh, but TransUnion's also utilized by by some. Uh, and yeah, you're right. The information can be can be different from one to the other. The fact that Alan's property isn't showing up means that maybe he hasn't applied for a new piece of credit uh, using the new address or mm. one of the financial institutions that he's dealing with. Maybe like right now that happens because a lot of people just get their bills emailed to them or they, yeah. they they're doing web banking. So they haven't updated. Maybe. If he updates the address with the financial institutions, they will update it. But the other thing that you got to be aware of, and we see this all the time, is that financial institutions are really, really quick to note you that you're late paying something, <laughs> but they're really slow noting absolutely everything else on these credit reports. Boy, it doesn't really benefit true. them. Founder CEO of Connect, Marcus Averis, uh, joining us, customer service representative specialist, Matthew Scanlon, and somewhere out there, principal broker, Justin Turner, but he's not... He can't even phone us. I, you'd, you'd think that he would be, you know, so excited to participate that he would have picked up the phone in deepest, darkest Peterborough and at least given us a call to say hi. But he's a bad driver. Can, he's a bad driver. Oh, is he? Oh, so, like, nice. he, I think he just got his license. So, I don't think you want him focusing on anything but the road. I'm sure the OPP <laughs> really appreciate uh, that. That adds up. Uh, yeah. I bet you, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm, afra I'm afraid of him changing the radio dial while he's driving, <laughs> let alone phone calls or... <laughs> Or Marcus, during the last segment, you were now. talking about the difference uh, between Connect, and you mentioned the word exit strategy, and I, that's a huge one because obviously, you know, if I'm going to the bank for a loan or whatever, that that's you know, they'll, if I qualify for the loan, they give me the loan, and the longer I take to pay it back, the happier they are. Yeah, so we think that th that's the wrong way to lend money, and that's how Connect's been built. I've actually I pulled up uh, our investor uh, portal here, Matt, if you want to click on it. I know that you can't see this if you're um, driving your car, but if you're watching our show on Saturday mornings at 8.30 on CHCH TV channel 11 or YouTube. our YouTube channel, uh, Matt, you thought I was going to forget that, but I didn't, uh, then uh -huh. you'll be able to see what I'm showing you right now. What I'm showing you is actually my wife's investment account in connect oh, nice. um, so if you are an investor in connect you get access to our investor portal and in our investor portal it shows you the first thing it shows you when you log in is a map of all the properties we have lent money on and then uh, don't click on it matt but you can go in and click on every single property if you're an <laughs> investor <clears throat> and you'll see all the reasons why we decided to lend money on that property so subject to the Privacy Act, we provide you, and subject to the approval of the borrower, we provide our investors with a really wholesome look at where the property is, why it's valued the way it's valued, and why we decided to make the loan, and the supporting documentation for the loan. And then we show you all of our historical returns. We show you in real time what the loan to value of our fund is. So today it sits at 51.69% loan to value. That means that if we are lending against $100 worth of real estate total, all of the debt on all of that real estate does not exceed $51.69. So it's, as you can see, it's a really, really conservative fund. Um, it shows you in real time what percentage of our fund is held in commercial mortgages, residential mortgages, or construction mortgages. Shows you what percentage is in first position, second position, uh, and it shows you the size of the loans that we've got in our portfolio. Mm. So, it is the, the, when we spoke about how other mix raise capital. The way we we raise money is by being really, really transparent with our investors and really, really transparent with our borrowers. So number one, our investors want to tell more people about it. And you wouldn't believe how many people call and say, hey, uh, you know, Joe Smith was showing me 
your investor portal and how his investments work, I'm really interested to put some money with you guys. Or how many of our borrowers who we're able to provide lower cost capital to because of the way we're structured. I was explaining a little bit about that earlier in the last segment, but because we don't have to pay all of the people that normally are required in this ecosystem of, of bringing mortgages in and bringing capital, we don't pay anybody. So it allows us to pay or, or to have our borrowers pay less interest. Those borrowers, while they're borrowing from Connect, are learning about how to invest with Connect. And when we've repaired whatever's de deficient, in many cases, they'll take additional capital and they might max out their RSPs or their TFSAs nice. or their kids' RESPs because the MIC is a registered vehicle. Uh, and it's actually one of the most cost-effective places to park your RSP. I don't know, Nick is our investor relations manager, but I think it costs $20 a year to hold a registered account with us. And I know that, I think TD is $165 a year. I think, and you know, that, that kind of, we should have asked the last, the two callers ago, what, the, what he pays for the self-directed RSP, because it's not cheap. Mm. And I know uh, we work very hard to make it cost effective because we want investors that don't have a lot of money to start off with. We're okay with that, right? Like we want to, we want to expose people to this type of investment. So that's why we're willing to take investments, I think as low as 2,500 bucks. Yeah, it's 2,500. Yeah. So, and that's just because it's automated to a great extent. And because this technology is mapped to our, um, our mortgage origination technology, which is all connect built, connect owned because of that, it doesn't really cost us any more money to bring on investors. And the investors can see in real time how deals are being processed. So as deals come in and we decide to fund them, all of the data feeds right into our investor portal. And then if, you, if you're thinking about investing, and obviously you can't get into the investor portal until you've invested, but we can, we can send, set you up with a test account. But if, if you want to just go to the Connect website, Matt, you want to click on this? Absolutely. Uh, on the Connect website, there's a tab that says our portfolio. It's in, on the investing side. And within this tab, if you scroll down a little bit, Matt, you can see first the first chart, and Ian, I'm going to do my best to describe this to you right now. But the first chart you see is a comparison of Connect, our mortgage investment fund, and on the left-hand side here are our competitors. So other mortgage investment corporations that are operating in Canada. And you can see at 50% loan to value, our peers are between you know, 65 and 75% loan to value. And on the right side of this column, it shows you the banks, the Canadian banks, uninsured mortgage portfolios. And Connect is, if, if we were to compare it, I think Connect is the third uh, or the, sorry, the fourth lowest amongst all of the Canadian banks. Um, now, that we should qualify that by saying that Connect does not have the same income and credit requirements to lend money. But whenever, whenever I'm speaking about this, I like to remind people that when a Canadian bank lends money and they require certain credit and income, although Connect doesn't require the same credit and income levels, Connect's thesis to lend money is that we're going to be able to repair the credit and or income. Mm. So, and the people that we're helping are typically people that might have fallen on some hard times and we're working with them to get them back on their feet. So they're, they've been tested a little bit. So I like our borrowers, right? Like they're self-employed. They, you know, they might be a little scrappier, you know, they're, they're working to create something. Uh, they might be buying an investment property to fix it up. They might be, you know, building something they might have two properties and they're borrowing equity from one to fix another one whatever the case is there's a an argument that we can make that we're going to help them get to cheaper money whereas with the banks and their portfolios it's just you know he, here's the capital based on certain yeah. very basic requirements so let me jump I, in yeah. uh, with a call he's, we got a question from william i think you answered it but he's still on the line so maybe not william good afternoon welcome in what's your question well, you you did answer my question. I was I was going to say what's the, what's the, what are the table stakes to get in uh, to talk with you guys about investing? 
Uh, and you mentioned that it was like it was twenty five hundred dollars, so that's perfect. Uh, I do have a couple of like really easy questions, but there are, there are a few of them. So first of all, you mentioned that there it's a registered uh, it's a registered product, so all the funds in and out have to be registered. Um, so obviously RRSP accounts. What about Lira accounts? Uh, you, you know what? I believe that we do take uh, Lira accounts, but you got to speak to our uh, investor relations team. Um, okay. I, I, like, yeah, I, I'm so not that's a, perfect. Yeah. But yeah, all registered accounts. Like, so I can tell you, like, this is one of my wife's accounts that we're showing here. My wife and I both have like our RSPs, our kids' TFSAs, uh, or sorry, our kids' our ESPs, our TFSAs. It's a really great place for registered accounts because we the company doesn't we don't get taxed and if you're holding it in a tax efficient account you're not getting taxed and if you are holding it personally you need to be aware that there are tax consequences because we pay out a dividend but it is considered interest income and it is taxed as such by the recipient so there are some strategies around minimizing um tax tax on this based on who holds the investment uh within your family but uh, you you do have to realize that like anything in Canada, there's tax. And I heard on the last show that uh, the uh, investment advisor guys think that the HST is going up by 2%. I didn't like hearing that. Mm, can you imagine? I could definitely okay, imagine. Uh, yeah, unfortunately, so can I. Man, I have a text message here that's very important. Hey, guys, this is principal broker Justin Turner. And I'm not kidding. You put in the whole title. Um, make sure to clear the air that I'm actually a good driver. <laughs> Great show, guys. Good entertainment for my drive home. See you next week. Hilarious. Um, I, I'm hoping that he pulled over. I was going to say the same message. thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, or at so least doing a voice to text. Right? Not here, right? <laughs> That's right. That's right. So at least we know he's listening. So let's uh, not say anything mean about him like we did during the first segment. 416 872 1010. 416 872 1010. Text messages at 7 1010. Sam is in Toronto. Sam, good afternoon. Welcome in. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for taking the call. Um, I had a question regarding my upcoming uh, mortgage renewal. Um, I've been paying down my mortgage pretty uh, diligently because my parents are old fashioned and they've been telling me to do so. So my balance is probably roughly 150 or so now. And my condom must be worth like 800 or something. Uh, so, you know, I'm just wondering, should I just keep paying my mortgage down? Like when I renew or cause I'm using all my money to do so like extra money or my friends are telling me that maybe that's not such a good idea these days. So I just want to get an idea from uh, these guys if possible. Hmm. That's a good question. And it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's really good on timing. So, a lot of people are asking this same question right now. Interest rates are so low. And if you're renewing a mortgage or refinancing a mortgage right now, it's it, your rate's going to be lower than 2%. It might even be lower than 1% if it's a variable rate and it's the right, uh, the right type of lender that you're getting the mortgage from. So if you think that you can create a return greater than, than the interest rate on your mortgage, and that can be a GIC sometimes, then it, it, it's going to make sense. And again, it's, you got to be careful how you talk about this stuff, right? Like it's based on the risk propensity of the borrower. It's based on their status as an accredited or non-accredited, an eligible or a non-eligible investor. But I am, like, there's no one that's going to be more confident in our mortgage investment fund than me. And that's the way it's supposed to be. There's no one that knows more about it. There's no one, I know every single mortgage that's in it. So I'm, I'm such a strong proponent of what we've created in that fund and our ability to return, you know, historically an 8% yield to our investors while making sure that we're helping the right borrowers and we're getting the right borrowers in our mortgage fund. So and you can just see the spread there, right? Like that's, you know, on $100,000, if you're borrowing money at 2% and you're investing it at 8%, you're getting $6,000 back. And we pay out a monthly dividend yield. So that's 500 bucks a month that you're going to be netting out. Now you got to account for tax on that if it's not being held within a registered fund. And again, you got to make sure that you're eligible to do this. And it's risky to take debt to invest. 
There are a lot of caveats here, but it is an environment that we're in right now with a great deal of inflation. And that environment should be able to provide you with some yield, some stable yield somewhere without taking on undue and unnecessary risk. And I believe that Connect is an amazing option. I think that there's lots of options out there. I think that a portfolio has got to be diversified. Mine is not. <laughs> I'm all in on Connect. But yours should be. And I think that we, it's, although it's one great option, it's something that you, know, you definitely have to discuss. We've got an exempt market dealer that we work with that has to qualify everybody that invests in our mortgage fund. So that's part of our process. Although it is relatively automated, you're still going to have to get on a phone with somebody and you're going to have to fill out a, a, a form that ensures that you're eligible to invest with us. Um, but keep in mind, you're borrowing money. If you're borrowing money at 1% and you can get an 8% yield, uh, it can help you pay your mortgage. In fact, if you have a $150,000 mortgage, if you were to max out all these numbers here, which, I mean, this is total pie in the sky, but think about it like this. He's got an $800,000 place. That means eligible to take out $640,000. He's got a $150,000 mortgage. That's $490,000 of available capital. $490,000 of available capital. Let's say he's borrowing it at 2%. That is $9,800 in interest, $490,000 is going to return him just shy of $40,000 in interest. Um, that's like, you know, 30 grand extra every year. Right? Like, I got to think that's a bit of a mm -hmm. no-brainer if you can qualify and you're accredited. All of these things have to happen. But, and you might not want to take all of it. You might want to do half of it. But there's something called the law of 72. And basically what this law says on a very high level is if you're planning on doing something, hurry the hell up and do it. Because if you divide the return that you've got on an investment into 72, that equals the amount of time it takes your money to double. So the law of 72, over the last nine years with Connect, your money doubled. And nine years goes by fast, trust me. Um, and I mean, I don't have to tell you if you're watching this or you're listening to this, think about it, right? Like nine years ago, it was like two mortgage renewals, uh, less than two mortgage renewals. You could have doubled your money in that period of time. Then you can pay your mortgage off or it's amazing, you know, use that money. Here's, here's the one thing that I always point out is that you're not losing your asset in order to invest. Like you still have your house, your house still goes up well, in so, value. Yeah. Like, so like you're not losing out on, if anything, you're doubling down on your asset. Yeah, it's well said. So it's actually, the way I like to explain it is it's, and, and like my wife and I have done it on our house, it's like we've got someone else working, right? Like we've got a, you know, two, my wife's probably going to hate me saying all this, out, but I've got a $2 million okay, line of credit. Off. Yeah, yeah. I've got a $2 million line of credit that we've got and it's invested in mortgages and the yield from those mortgages pays the, you know, 1.5%, I don't know what my mortgage rate is. And I get a spread of, you know, six and a half percent on 2 million bucks. And that's 130,000 bucks. My wife doesn't work there. The mortgage works for us. Um, that so, really is what making your money work for you means. Yeah, right? listen, I mean, it connects all about this. Make money count. Make your money okay, count. Okay, I got two minutes and I want to make sure I get Peter in because he's been holding. Peter is in Hamilton. Peter, what's your question? <laughs> Perfect timing based on what you're saying. I'll make it quick. I make just about 100000 a year. I put in $75 a week for my wife's RSP uh, spells. And I do that because, one, she, didn't, she doesn't work or she didn't work. I want to bring my tax bracket down, take the tax break on my income tax also, and get, help her out with a pension. I have a full pension as well. But recently, she just got a, a full-time job making about $80,000 a year that includes a uh, pension. So my question is now... We have a little bit of extra income coming in. We have very little debt. We have a mortgage. But I want to know what would be our best to look at investing. I like, to, I like to retire between six and ten years. I'm going to get a full pension in six years. My wife wants to work maybe another 15 years and to retire. What do you suggest to put a little bit of extra money away to help us more for retirement? Guys, i got 40 seconds pushing it. L listen, I, I really... <laughs> It sounds like you're really sharp on what's happening right now. So that's mm -hmm. great. And I really would like to speak to you in a little more 
depth about this. I think that you're on the right track. I think that creating these pensions for yourself and an RRSP is another pension and a TFSA can behave the same way. Uh, you know, carefully structured insurance products can do the same things for you. you you've got to be like, I, I love the way that you've got your bogey, right? You set your I'll six tell you years. what, Marcus, I'm up against the wall. How about we suggest Peter give you guys a call tomorrow and uh, you Sorry, can talk Peter. To it's Ian's fault. I could keep talking it is, forever. It is. It's absolutely. I, I am the god of all time. So there you go. <laughs> Founder, CEO of Connect, uh, Marcus Zafaris, and uh, of course, CSR specialist, Matthew Scanlon. Gentlemen, thank you as always. Great thank out. you. Give us thank a call you. tomorrow, Peter.